Okay, so here we're going to um, organize our uh, three types of bonding uh, compounds, ionic solids, molecular, and metallic. And we're going to use the properties uh, they have to differentiate between them. So we spent a little bit of time looking at the lecture of metallic solids. And you realize it's the last type of bonding scenario that we have. Because if you consider the other two, we had ionic solids, which are nothing more than um, metal and nonmetal. And they made crystals, okay, of positive and negative ions. And as you learned in the movie, they cleave or sh uh, or break off because when you hit them with a hammer, okay, eventually positives and, and positives will be pushed against each other and they can break apart. It's a great animation of why ionic compounds, although in crystals, can be uh, cut at a certain angles and, and shar off, okay, and shatter. Limestone, anyone who's ever watched someone build a um, stone wall in their house has seen people cut with certain hammers to break these stones at certain angles into shapes they need to make the wall. And these are ionic compounds. Molecular solids are nothing more than a fancy word for covalent. Covalent compounds. And we use molecular to mean that make molecules. They don't make crystal, they make molecules. And of course a molecule, as we've already learned, is a small singular unit. For instance, water is one oxygen and two H's as its singular unit, whereas a crystal, like an ionic compound, has no single unit. Now, in truth, we have something called a unit cell that we'll learn in AP Chemistry about their most simplified version. But obviously, they make a crystal of a repeating positive and negative arrangement throughout a big crystal. And there's no uh, molecule, just a, again, a, a, a repeating arrangement. Okay, so in any case, covalent or molecular, now obviously there are nonmetals and nonmetals. And as we've talked at length, you should know clearly the difference between these major two. Okay, here the electronegativity difference or the change in electronegativity, okay, is uh, 1.7 or greater than 1.7. Okay, it's a general rule, meaning they have a large difference in electronegativity and there is a transfer. Can't say that I'm not transfer of electrons. That's why when you draw Lewis dot diagrams of ionic compounds, you're going to see those brackets empty for the metal who loses their valence and filled for the nonmetal showing the octet who gain enough to get that octet and there's your ionic bond in between here because the difference in electronegativity is less than 1.7 and that's a general rule meaning they're very similar in strength they're forth, forced to share electrons okay and of course we're going to see Lewis dot diagrams that show the sharing. We've spent a lot of time. Now they can share equally and be nonpolar bonds, molecular compounds, or share unequally and be polar. Metallic solids have metallic bonding. And these, of course, the last scenario, you got metal, nonmetal, nonmetal, nonmetal. And of course, the last scenario is metal and metal. And these are unique type of bonding arrangements. Whereas covalent compounds are local bonds. I say that because there are bonds in exactly one area. Ionic solids are attractions, okay, that are not local. They can surround the entire ion. That's why they can form crystals. And metallic are very similar, okay. They have a, um, basically, uh, something to remember them by. They have a nice way to describe them as a sea of mobile electrons. As the video talked about, the C theory of, of electrons. Okay, essentially, as a reminder, what they are is the nuclei, or I should say, more importantly, the ion of the metals. Let's say you have iron. Okay, you have iron plus uh, two. Okay, 
and you have another iron plus two. And these are in crystal formations, and their electrons that were lost to become plus two are not held tightly by each individual ion. They're able to flow throughout the entire crystal. And these ions attract simultaneously everybody else's electrons in this sea in all directions, which gives them the unique properties. So they are, of course, also crystals, but those are crystals of their cations, their positive ions. Now, this is crystals of cations, positive ions, and negative ions, okay? But this attraction to simultaneously everybody's electrons at once gives them their bunch of unique properties, as was talk, discussed about. So we have some examples. Ionic compounds, um, clearly metal, nonmetal is like NaCl. Okay, it's binary, but we're not locked into this metal, nonmetal, okay, uh, scenario. We're not uh, always going to be that. We could also have a metal and a polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ion. For instance, I could have sodium, and I can have nitrate. And this would be an example of a compound that has both ionic between the sodium and the nitrate polyatomic ion, which is a cluster of nonmetals, okay, um, the, the ionic bonds between this positive and this negative, remember this cluster of nonmetals needed one to make it work, remember sp2 hybridized, yeah. Any case, this is a compound that has both ionic and covalent bonds, but this is still an ionic compound, also called a salt, okay. Now we also could have a metal, okay, and a Nonmetal, I mean, I'm sorry, a polyatomic ion and a nonmetal. Case in points, I can have that ammonium ion that has that coordinate covalent bond, which is positive one as a cluster, and it attract a negative chloride ion. Notice there's no metals here, yet this thing is ionic because this NH4 plus and the Cl negative stick together by an ionic bond. And of course, you can also have a polyatomic ion. All right, um, and another polyatomic ion. For instance, I could have ammonium nitrate. Again, two of these clusters, one positive because of, because of the coordinate covalent bond of the H plus, and this one negative because it gained an electron, and this would stick together also by um, ionic bonds, also covalent bonds are in between. So ionic solids, although we talk about metal, nonmetal as primarily the arrangement we see, there are other examples um, that may may not have, okay, this no metal involved, okay? So don't think you have to have a metal and a nonmetal always. It just merely means that positive and negative ions are sticking together, okay? So covalent compounds, uh, Let's look at some examples. Very simple, we always talk about water. Okay, now we're talking about solids to compare here, but so we have ice. Okay, we have dry ice, CO2 solid, loves the sublime. You notice it's nonpolar, so it doesn't stick together very well. What other solids we can use? We can use some fats, you know, we got sugar, C6, H12O6, glucose. Okay, uh, some uh, to name some other examples, to name a few. Metallic solids. Now, these are things that are undergoing this metallic bonding, this sea of mobile electrons. And, well, in fact, their chemical formulas are just the elements. So copper solid would, in, would mean they have a bunch of copper atoms uh, employing this type of well, sea that they're attracted to. I could put mercury, H2, uh, and now, of course, that'd be a liquid, but not a solid, but you get the idea. Gold, and any of the transitions or any metal, okay, in its solid phase, okay, would stick together by this arrangement. Okay, melting points. Well, as we've already talked about, the melting points of ionic compounds are high melting points. Because if you're in a crystal that's positive negative attractions, the positive negative attractions are, are very, very strong at some points. And of course, being surrounded by negative ions inside the crystal gives these ions a strong, stable arrangement. So it takes a lot of energy. Covalent compounds do not usually make crystals. There's two types, of course, that do. Those are called network solids, not part of this course. But all the rest of these, if you think about it, uh, have low melting points. Think about rubber, plastics, okay? These things melt at low stick of butter, which isn't essentially fat, have low melting points. And the reasoning is 
molecules uh, don't tend to stick well to each other as strongly as positive and negatives. Remember, even a polar molecule that has strong positive and negatives, those are partial positives, partial negatives. They're not like a full positive and a full negative from, okay, from a transfer. Remember, there's no transfer here. They're sharing. So therefore, you don't become full positive. Full, so the attraction between molecules will never be as strong as the ions. Now, metallic solids have extremely high, okay, higher than ionic. And you say, Mr. Grotsky, they're kind of sharing electrons. Yeah, but a lot of these guys can be sharing electrons in all directions. And the crystalline structure and uh, attracting actual negative ones. Here you're attracting a negative one through some distance and, you know, and maybe six directions. Here these ions are, tra are attracting a lot of negatives in many directions, which increases their attraction for each other. And that's why uh, metals, especially transitional, have extremely high melting points. Okay, more so than the melting points of ionic solids. Now, of course, there are always exceptions. There are some that, some that don't require much. Lead is an example. Okay, hardness. Okay, these are very hard. Okay, they can be cleaved, as we talked about. Okay, molecular solids, butter, plastics. Okay, these are, of course, soft, and they're also brittle. Okay, remember the racquetball that we shattered? They can be, be, be broken up and cleaved among their local bonds in certain directions. Okay, these can be cleaved too in their local attractions in their crystals. Here, okay, very hard. Okay, and they just cannot usually be cleaved. Now there's some examples that can, like tungsten, okay, they can be somewhat brittle, but for the most part they are very hard, not brittle. Crystal, we've talked about these two are your crystals. Okay, there are some crystals in molecular solids. Okay, they're called network solids. They're not part of this course anymore, but the network solids are a network of covalent bonds. Uh, diamond is an example. Okay, again, not part of this course. Carbon solid diamond. Conductor of heat. Um, ionic compounds, not, not very good. Okay, so we would say not applicable here. Okay, conductor of heat, these would be uh, terrible. Okay. You would say not very good, okay. But worse, these are so bad that they're insulators. You may say why we talked about this. Non-metal compounds, okay, are terrible conductors because of they they what they attract electrons. So because they attract their electrons so strongly, uh, electrons aren't free to move. So there's no movement. Okay, of electrons because of the high electronegativity. Now here they're just ions, and the ions can't move. You need to have motion of some sort. So this strong crystal really, really has a tough time moving. Okay, metals are very good. Check plus conductors of heat, and they have more fluid motion in their crystals because their attractions, okay, to those electrons in that C allow for more fluidity of motion, and of course. These loosely held electrons are free to conduct heat as well. So these are very good conductors of heat. These are the best we have in nature. Okay. Of course, there is one exception. Diamond is one of the best as well. Okay. Now, conductors electricity. Okay. Very important. Ionic compounds right here. In order to conduct electricity, you need two things. You need to be able to have movement of ions, a movement of uh, electrons. These in the solid phase, they do not, okay, very important, do not conduct. Do not conduct. Why? There is no free ions. I can't say that enough. You will see that pop up. Solid ionic compounds, their ions are not free to move. Liquid, where you break in that crystalline structure, or aqueous, when you made the famous boyfriend, famous girlfriend scenario come out and water gets to move them out, these are excellent conductors. Good thing we live because of ions in the aqueous phase in our body. So not in the solid phase, but yes, in the liquid phase. These are terrible, terrible conductors of electricity. Why? They don't have any what? Ions. So there's no ions to move. 
molecules don't make ions there's no remember to make an ion you have to have a transfer these are sharing so there's no ions okay and there's no what no free electrons electrons are held too close to the vest they're attracting the electrons the electrons aren't free to move because of the high electronegativity between the two nonmetals so there's no free ions no free electrons no conductivity these of course are excellent conductors check plus excellent conductors these are our best conductors of electricity why okay for both reasons right here these are both very good conductors because what do they have they have they have mobile free electrons that sea of mobile electrons makes them able to conduct heat and conduct electricity okay both excellent okay obviously malleability ductility none these guys cannot be shaped and hammered they would they would break apart through their crystalline structure as we showed by the uh, great animation two positive and two negatives will hit each other eventually when a hammer hits these and these will break off okay there's none in malleability and ductility here and of course there is malleability and ductility of metals and metallic bonding now ductility is very similar to malleability ductility if you didn't pick it up it's the ability to take something and draw it into a very thin wire okay well non-metals can't make a thin wire. think of a clay think of um, um, ceramic very thin it's gonna break okay and of course um, rocks you may think but th rocks would actually cleave in this scenario too and I'd say rocks rocks on a beach are silicon dioxide which is actually a network solid but limestone and things you make um, oxides of the earth could make the structure so the only thing that has the type of attractions that can allow for the shape is um, metals okay uh, malleability is essentially the same thing, except we're not making a wire. We're able to hit it with a hammer and heat it into any any shape, including a wire. And because of the arrangement of the sea of electrons, it allows these metals to attract electrons in all directions. They can be twisted and, and turned into any direction. They will still attract uh, the electrons in the crystal. Soluble in water. Well, some of these are, yeah. Yes, there is some solubility with ionic compounds, right? Because there's a positive and a negative side that the water can surround. That's the famous boyfriend, famous girlfriend. So these can these can actually go into water. And these have some solubility too. Yes, and I'll say yes and no. Okay, for the most part, we consider molecular compounds to be nonpolar. Okay, when you think of plastics, you think of butter, think of gasoline, these things do not dissolve in water very well because they're nonpolar. But of course, there are some examples that are polar. Water is an example. So you'll you'll see mostly no, okay, when it comes to uh, molecular compounds, okay, because there's so many of them that are nonpolar. And of course, there would be a no here. Uh, metals don't dissolve in water. They react with water and corrode, but they don't slough off in water, okay. They just the the attractions for their electrons in their positive crystal structure is too great. Water can't compete for that. Electrolytes are a fancy word for um, ions in solution. So electrolytes, yeah, we call salts electrolytes because they break apart into positive and negative ions that can conduct in water. Okay, it's how our body conducts electricity through our nervous system. Uh, this is not an electrolyte. Okay, they do not, molecular compounds do not make ions. And of course, these are not electrolytes as well. Even though we might have metals in our body, they're not moving to conduct charges, okay? So those are the basic properties of the three type. And from that, you should flip this over, okay, and consider the questions I have here. And I think if I did this correctly, there's as many dashes as there is choices for each of these, these, um, uh, these questions. So try your hand at this, do your best. And we'll go over tomorrow. I'm going to post a, an answer key later on today. This is, I believe. Okay, so good luck.